Have you ever wondered what this equation is that's inside a picoscope that says y equals mx plus c? A lot of times you'll see that if you have some particular, say, transducer, like a pressure transducer, well, they'll give you the values for these here particular uh, transducers that's got some particular voltage at some pr pressure range, but they don't seem to tell you how did they get these numbers. Well, let's go over that and break this equation down, and let's see how this here works. All right, welcome to this Dustman channel. My name is Terry, and I'll be your host for this video. Over here we have my nephew, Zach. He's eight years old. So we're going to show you how easy this stuff is going to be because if you can understand it, surely you can, right? Yep. All right. First, what we're going to do is we're going to be talking about pressure transducers. Now, I have one right here. This is a uh, tra transducer that measures gauge pressure. We'll go over that. And then I have another one here which is an absolute pressure transducer. All right? Now since we're talking about pressure, let's go over that a little bit. Let's talk about gauge pressure. All right, so to start with, we're just going to draw a line. And I'm going to come right here, and I'm going to call this zero PSIG. Pounds per square inch gauge. All right? Now, anything below this line is going to be a vacuum. So down here, we're going to call this minus 15 PSIG. Now, atmospheric pressure is about 14.7 PSI at sea level. But for our math, and a lot of these here transducers, especially the absolute pressure transducers, they're calibrated to use a minus 15 PSIG or zero PSIA absolute pressure. And we'll get to that in just a moment. Okay, so up here, anything above this line is positive pressure. Anything below this line is negative pressure. Now let's use an example. Let's just say this was 100, say 50 PSI. When you see PSI, that means gauge pressure. So, if we take a, a gauge such as this one right here, you can see that the needle is on zero. But we know there's atmospheric pressure around the gauge, but it's not measuring that actual pressure. Gauge pressure is measured relative to atmospheric pressure. So if we have 14.7 PSI and we subtract that off, we're going to be left with zero. And that's what we have right here. So anything that's above that, as I mentioned, is positive pressure but we are not counting the atmospheric pressure, okay? Now let's go over here and let's look at absolute. So this is gauge over here. And this is absolute. Do you have any questions so far, Zach? Nope. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to line these up. Now we're going to say that approximately 15 PSI. All right, so this would be 15 PSIA absolute. This here gauge is being measured relative to a perfect vacuum or an absolute vacuum, which down here, then this would be zero PSIA. Then up here, this right here, we would be measuring, if we're going to equate this to being the same, we're going to take 150, we're going to add that 15, so that's going to be 165 PSIA, okay? So this is how an absolute pressure transducer measures this pressure, and over here we have a gauge pressure, all right? I have a question. All right. Are Should they both different? Yes, I just, yes, they're different in how they're measuring pressure. The pressure that's around us, we know there's atmospheric pressure. Yeah. Let's just say it's 15 pounds per square inch. Remember, like if we take your hand, yeah, square inch. push down, 15 pounds approximately. Mm -hmm. Okay? But we're going to call that zero. We're going to subtract off that, that 15 pounds, and we're just going to say it's zero. Look at this here gauge. You see the gauge? Yeah. See, it says zero. Yeah. But we know it's about 15 pounds. But here it's saying zero. Absolute pressure over here 
it's going to actually measure that pressure that surrounds us. Mm. See what I mean? Yeah. 15 pounds? Zero. This is what we see, this is what they see. Well, this is on this this is on this kind of gauge. Yeah. And this is on an absolute pressure gauge. Hmm. See? Yeah. So it's actually going to measure the atmospheric pressure. Hmm. See what I mean? Yeah. Now, if we go to a perfect vacuum, then we're going to have zero. Hmm. Zero pressure. Yeah. Okay? On an absolute pressure. Any other questions? No, not yet. All right. Okay, so let's go. Let's go to a pressure transducer. Okay, now this one here that I showed the first one. This is a gauge pressure, so it's going to be measuring gauge pressure. Now this one right here came from China. It has a 12 volt DC supply. It is uh, goes from zero to 150 psig. Number zero is just like this gauge right here. So at atmospheric pressure. It's going to be reading zero pounds, okay? okay? And it will be putting out one to five volts DC. Mm -hmm. Now, this voltage is proportional to the amount of pressure that's being applied. So, if I had zero PSIG, in other words, we had atmospheric pressure, which is, we're saying is zero, yeah. right? then that's going to be putting out one volt. Got it? Yeah. So, if I had, so if I had a uh, 150 pounds of pressure on it, then how much voltage would it be putting out? 105? That's right, 5 volts. And if I go in the middle, see? Yeah. And you know, so it's going to be proportional. All right? Okay. Now, here's the absolute pressure transducer. Mm -hmm. Now, this one was designed and built in the USA, Asheville, North Carolina. Okay? So this one will measure from zero to 300 PSIA, and that zero is a perfect vacuum. Now, nothing in reality is perfect, but it is very, very close. And by the way, the way these things work, both of them, whether it's a gauge or absolute pressure transducer, they use a piezo, piezo uh, resistive sensing element. So on one side of the element, they're going to have a... Uh, in this particular case, there's going to be that perfect vacuum, but that's what it's going to be referenced to, and the other side is going to be putting their pressure to. Mm -hmm. Now, on the gauge pressure, we have the same thing on that sensing element. On one side, we're going to have the atmospheric pressure. Yeah. That's what it's referenced to. And that can be sealed, or it can be vented. If it's vented, then it's exposed to the atmosphere. If it's sealed, then that chamber it has a, it's, it's filled with an atmospheric pressure, so it's yeah. not going to vary. So that's uh, it's all contained within the sensor. Hmm. Okay. And uh, this one, by the way, goes from nine volts to thirty volts on the supply, and zero to three hundred psia, and it puts the voltage out from zero to ten volts. Hmm. Okay. With me? Yeah. But I have one question. Okay. How do these things actually work? How do you plug them in? How do you? Well, you have a supply of volts. Yeah. Now this particular one here has a black wire, a green wire, a red wire, and a white wire. And a white wire. Well, now remember I said it can go from 9 volts to 30 volts DC. Yeah. So this right here, that is going to be uh, the green wire yeah. and the red wire is our supply volts. Okay. So our red is our positive and our green is our negative. Okay. 9 to 30 volts. Now this black wire is a chassis ground. So in other words, this wire is attached to the shell of the sensor. Oh, so it goes all the way inside right here. And connects to the shell. Yeah. And the white wire is where our voltage comes out hmm. relating to the pressure. Yeah. So if we wanted to measure that, say with a voltmeter or something like that, then we'd be measuring between the green wire, which is the also the supply volts return, yeah. and the white wire. Hmm. Okay? Yeah. Any other questions? Nope. Okay. So far, so good, right? Yep. Now, the whole point of this video is when I, I showed you in the introduction, is where did these numbers come from with that little equation that you saw, which is Y equals MX plus, and in Picoscope it says C, but if you're taking math, it'll say B, 
Whether yeah. it's B, whether it's C. B, C, it, both the same. It doesn't matter. Okay? So we're going to see how, using these two sensors, how these numbers are derived. And a little bit right after this here, a whiteboard, I'm going to show you a lot easier way of how to get to it. All right, let's start off with, uh, let's do our one to five volts. That's okay. uh, this particular sensor yeah. right here. Okay? So we already said that's a gauge pressure. Yeah. So it goes from 0 to 150 PSI, right? And if you see PSI, that's understood to be gauge pressure. And if you want to, you can put a G. Now it's no misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. So remember, at atmospheric pressure, yeah. we're measuring 0. All right. Now, gauge, these, these, uh, these transducers gauge pressure. They're not designed to actually measure vacuum. But, remember, we have that piezo piezoresistive sensing element, so it's going to flex. So on one side you're going to add pressure, the other side you're going to add your reference, which is gauge. So even if you pull a vacuum on it, the voltage, you know, it will lower, but it may not be scaled. So the manufacturer is not really scaling this because they're not actually looking to measure a vacuum. But you might get lucky, you get a sensor, you know, it might work out pretty good, all right? So, getting back to this uh, right here, we and by the way, this is one volt to five volts DC. So, zero PSI yeah. is going to give us one volt. Okay. 150 PSI is going to give us five volts. Yes. So, now we're going to set up a coordinate system. Hmm. So, this is going to be what? This is a This is Y. X. That's right. This is X. And this is Y. That is Y. That is correct. Now the voltage is treated as raw data. And that's going to be plotted across the X axis. So let's call this down here volts. Okay? Yeah. And this up here on the Y is going to be, what do you think? Uh... If the X is volts, and what do you think the Y is going to be? I don't know. Pressure. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yep, yeah, that's going to be our pressure, right? Now, the pressure is an engineering unit, and that's called engineering units. So basically we're taking a voltage, yeah. and we want to convert that voltage into a pressure that equates to whatever voltage we get, it's going to have the correct pressure. Yeah. And that's what we're going to try to figure out. Okay. And then we're going to figure out how that formula, that equation, comes into play. All right, so let's look at this uh, uh, zero. So we said that uh, zero pressure, we have one volt. All right, so look in here. You remember I said this was on the X and the pressure is on the Y? Yeah. So let's look at the X. So if we go one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So there's one. Right? Yeah. Now one says it's going to have what? Zero. Right. So that point is going to be right here. We go across one. Right? Yeah. And by the way, what comes first? X. That's right. X always comes first. Yeah. And our next number is going to be Y. Yeah. We didn't go up and down on the Y. No. It's zero. So we're going to put that right there. Okay. Right? Now if we look at the next one, we got what? Five. Yeah. So 5 is over here. So 5 is our X, so we put in first. Mm -hmm. And now our next one, what are we going to put in there? Zero. No. And 5, 5 volts, we're going to have what kind of pressure? 5 volts equals 150. That's correct. So we put 150, that was our Y value. So if we went over 5 and went up 150, and let's say 150 is right here, yeah. we went over, we went up, Right there. Right there. And there's our other point, right? Hmm. Okay. So far, so good? Yep. All right. Now, keep in mind that this here is not a scale, okay? So we're just illustrating where the points say would, you know, be lined yeah. up. Yeah. If so, this was real, then it would go all the way up there. Yeah, that, that 150 would be yep. way up there. And that point there would be closer over here, hmm. right? Yeah, but this is just an example. It's just an example. So if we go through there like that, yeah, right. And uh, so far we're looking okay. Whoop, I did that wrong. 
I did that wrong, Zach. Look, one, right? Yeah. So it should, and one and zero, so it should be right there. Yeah. You're supposed to be watching me. So that means that this is going to be more like, oops, I can't, oh. more like that, right? Yeah. All right. Zach's supposed to be helping me out, guys. You're doing a great job. Okay. You see what we did there? Now? Yep. So okay. Like that. Right. Now, that equation that we see in the picoscope, that y yeah. equals mx plus b, yeah. that is called a slope-intercept form equation. Mm. Now, so we have a slope, we have an intercept. What does that mean? Slope. Slope, slope. m. That's right. Or m. b. All right, well, let's, look, uh, let's look at it right here. So we have y equals mx plus b, right? Yeah. So y is our value on the y value. Yeah. Remember, y is our pressure. Yeah. M is going to be our slope. Yeah. In other words, this line, this is a line for a linear equation. And, and remember we talked about this here, transducers, they put out a voltage that's proportional to the pressure. Yeah. Basically, you're saying that it's linear. Mm. Okay? So we can plot that on a line, right? Mm. Which is what this is. So this is going to be our slope. Yeah. Slope, sometimes called gradient. Yeah. Right? And it's basically, it's a basically uh, about the inclination of this line. In other words, how steep is it? How steep is this line? Yeah. Okay? X, that's going to be what? Our X. Yeah, but what is X? X is, is volts. Volts, that's correct. So there you go. And B, right? Yeah. B is where does this line cross over this y-axis? Mm -hmm. See how it crosses over here? Yeah. That has some point. Hmm. Now in picoscope they call that an offset. Alright? So we will call it uh, y-intercept. If you're taking a math class, that's what they will call it. Yeah. And if you're doing scaling of sensors, they are called that an offset, right? And yeah. over here, this slope, if you're doing sensors, sometimes they'll call it a multiplier, sometimes a scale factor. Yeah. And we'll just call it, say, a multiplier. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll just call it a scale, scale factor. Yeah, why not? All right. So we got all this stuff there, right? Yeah. Now. What we need to find out is, first thing we need to find out is what is the slope? So we have this here, these two points, we need to find the slope first. Hmm. Now, slope is defined as, first is M, right? M is yeah. slope. And then we're going to say Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. Now I'm going to define my points, like this point up here is going to be 5, right, 150. And I'm going to say that this one down here is x what? X. X1? Oh, yeah, x1. Okay, so what would this one be? X2. No. No, y1. That's right, because it's in a y position. Yeah. Right? And then this one up here, what would that one be? That would be x2. Right, because this is and second this one point. would be y2. That is correct. See how simple this is? Eight years old. Okay, now all we got to do is take our values here and substitute them in here. Yeah. So m is equal to what's y2? Wait, y. Y2. Y2 is 150. So we put that in. And what's y1? Y1 right here is zero. So we're going to subtract zero. What's x2? X2 is five. Five. And we subtract. What's x1? One. That's right, that's one. So we subtract, what do we get here? 150. 150. And then four. And four. So if we take 150 and divide by four, what are we going to get? get Can you get that in your head? I'm mm, 37 and a half, I think. 150, right, divided by four equals. Oh my goodness. 37 and a half, okay? So that's 37 and a half. Yeah. That's what our slope is. Uh -huh. All right, that's the slope on that line. How, yeah. how steep it is. Yeah. All right, so we're getting good. So we already got this part right here for, for our slope. 
or yeah. gradient, as it's called in Picoscope. All right. Now, so let's go and let's see. Let me move over here a little bit. Have I got enough room? I guess we got enough room here. Yeah. All right. So let's put up y equals m x plus b again. Yeah. Okay. Now we have our slope. So which was 37 and a half. Yeah. And we're going to use one of these points here. Doesn't matter. We can use either one. Let's use this one here. One comma zero. Yeah. All right. So what is our y? Our y is zero. So I'm going to put zero for y. And yeah. what's our slope for m? Our slope is 3.75. 37.5, right? And what is our x? Our x. X1 or X2? Well, now, where do we get our zero from? Oh, so one. That's right, from right here. So we have to get it from the same point. Now. Yeah. So that's going to be one. And that MX means what? MX means slope and... Multiplied, right? Multiplied by X. That's correct. And X is? X is one. There you go. That's right. Now, what is our B? Our B... Which is our Y-intercept. Or our offset, right? Our y intercept, we don't know. We don't know, so we just put down B. Yeah, we'll figure that out. That's right. So now we're going to say 0 equals 37.5 times 1. Yeah. Is 37.5. That's correct. Plus B. Now, I want to know what B is, so how can I get just B? Hmm. i got to get rid of that, don't I? Yeah. So what do we do? We need to put it on the bottom. Yeah, so what do we do to get rid of 37.5? Minus it? Yeah, so we minus 37.5. Yeah. But if I do it to this side... We have to do the same to that side. That's right, that's right. So I subtract 37.5 over here. Now, if I subtract that, it gives me 0. Yeah. And I could bring down my B, right? Yeah. And then that's going to be equal to minus 37.5. Oh. So that is what B is equal to. Okay. Good? Yeah. Everybody can see that? Okay. Now, let's go... Uh, let me just put my points right back up there. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so now, we want to prove that this is correct. Yeah. That this, this is correct for B. And we want to prove that this is correct for M, a yeah. slope and a, a y-intercept. Yes. All right, so here's what we can do for that. Let's take, let's get rid of this little bit right here, okay? And we're going to do our y. We're going to prove it now if it's right. Okay. Mx plus b, all right? Yeah. Now let's go and use our other point up here. Okay. So what is our y? Our y. Is 150. So I'm going to write it right underneath. What is our slope? Our slope is 37.5. That's correct. Now what's our x? 5. That's correct. So we're going to multiply that times 5. And what is our, what is our b? Our b is minus 37.5. Minus 37.5. So this is 150. Now if I say 37.5 times 5, let's see what that gives us. I got 187.5. So I'm going to put in 187.5 minus 37.5. Yeah. So I subtract 37.5. What do I get? 150. Look at that. 150 <laughs> equals 150. So we know our slope and our intercept, y intercept, is correct. Oh my goodness. Isn't and it, it works every single time. That's what's amazing. Math is amazing. Yeah. Okay. Now, now we did that one. Now that just to drive it home, maybe we'll do one more. What do you yeah. Think? We'll do that. We'll do that absolute pressure. Yeah, that'll be fun. Okay. Let's give us some practice. Alright. So let's get that out. Okay, let's take our make. This is our volts, right? Yeah. This is our y. This is our pressure. Yeah. Right? And now we're going from 0 to 
you remember what it was? Zero to... And this is going to be an A, right? Yeah. Okay. And it's going to go from zero to 10 volts. Okay? Yeah. All right. All right, so far so good. Okay? Yeah. Now let's, uh, let's review our little scale here. Yeah. All right. Now right here, we're, we're going to make this what? We want this here to convert this absolute pressure transducer to read gauge pressure, right? Yeah. All right. So, you know, because uh, this will be like, say, used in, inside an engine, like an end cylinder yeah. pressure transducer, and you pretty much, you want to use a pressure gauge for that. But you need an absolute pressure transducer to measure that vacuum, all right? So, we're going to say that this here, atmospheric pressure, is going to be zero, right? Yeah. PSIG. Down here, we're going to say that's minus 15 PSIG. Okay? This is all the way down to a, a vacuum. Yeah. Low as you can get, right? Now, up here, atmospheric pressure, we're counting that too. Okay. So that means it's going to be 300 up here, right? Mm, yeah. Right? But we want to measure gauge pressure. So what do we have to do? We have to subtract. Oh. The 15 pounds, we don't want to measure that. Yeah, we don't want to measure that. So we're going to subtract that out and we're going to make it 285. Okay. P S I G. All right? Yeah. yeah. So now I'm going to get rid of that so we won't be confused. Yeah. So you, so that's that's going to be our that's going to be our factors. Yeah. So this right here is going to be 10 volts. Yeah. So when we hit 285, 10 volts, right? Yeah. And if we hit minus 15, what? It would be... Zero volts. Oh, yeah. Because remember, zero volts is going to be zero PSI. Yeah. PSIA. Yeah. We're just saying that zero down here is just going to be minus 15. Yeah. But the voltage is going to still be the same. Where up here, when it hits 285, uh, it'd be 10 volts. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So far, so good? We all good? Yep. You good? Any questions? Nope. Clear as mine? All right, so now let's go back to, uh, we do a little graph here first. Yeah. All right, so we're going to say here, right, and yeah. we're going to change that, right, because we're going to say that's 285. Yeah. And now we're going to say this is gauge pressure, right? Yeah. So it's zero, oh, got to change that too, don't we? Yeah. To what? To? Pressure. 15. Minus 15, right? Yeah. Minus 15. So now it's minus 15 to 285. Yeah. And minus 15, we're going to have zero, right? Okay. So what is that? What's on the x axis? X axis is volts. So it's zero, right? Yeah, so it's zero. Right. And it's going to be zero. What's on the. So it's going to be what? Down here? Down here's. On the y? Minus 15. Remember? On the x axis, yeah. volts. And then y, y is pressure. Yeah. So we're coming down, so it's going to be like right there. Yeah. Right, that's our point. Yeah. So that point right there is going to be what? That is going to be um, zero. Yeah, that's right. X comes first. Comma. Yep. Minus 15. There you go. Now, we got that one. Now let's do the other one, which is right here. So what do we do? We go over 10, right? Yeah. So I'm going to say, let's just add it up a little bit more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, seven 8, eight nine. 9. There's 10, yeah. right? But now we need to go up 285. So let's just say it's right there. Yeah, let's just say it's right there. Okay, there's our point. So what are we right here? That, this is... Um, 285, no, minus 285. Now, what's, what comes first? Volts. Oh, yeah. So. What's that, volts? Zero? No, we already did that one. Look oh. At, look at here. Ten. Ten goes first. Okay. And then what comes next? Comma, minus 285. Now, this is just going three. Oh, okay. So, just 285. 285. That is correct. Okay, and if we draw a line, we're going to connect, and it's going to go... I'm not going to get nowhere close, am I? 
about like Come on. There. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So far, so good, right? That's pretty steep. Yeah. And you look, we can see that the Y intercept is crossing over at minus 15. Yeah. All right. All right, let's go to our equation. Let's do right here. Make sure everybody can see. Let me shift over a little bit. So we can see we got our stuff here, right? Yep. Okay. And I'll just put it right there. All right, let's call out our points. What is this one? We'll say is X1. Yeah. And this is going to be what? Y1. Y1. And up here? X2, Y2. Can I call can I call this one up here X1? No. And this actually, actually No you can't. Yes you can. Why? It doesn't matter. If I call this one X1, that'd be Y1. Mm -hmm. And I call this one X2, X2 and Y2. Oh. It does not matter. You can choose what it you will get you this wants. you will get the same answer. Okay. But I like what I like to do is I just look at the minimum value. Right? And I just said, okay, that's X1 okay. and Y1. And then I do the max value, I say X2 and Y2. Yeah. But you can you can swap them. Hmm. Does not matter. Okay. You still get the same answer. Alright, so going back, here's our equation. Y equals MX plus B, right? Yeah. We want to solve for M. Yeah. You remember it? We so M equals M equals wait. M equals Oh, we did it like a few days ago. Y2? We just did it a while ago. Remember? Oh. Y2 Plus? minus Y1. Oh, I remember now. All right, so what's this? This is X2 yep. minus X1. That is correct. And by the way, since we're talking about this, this is actually, see the Y values here? We're taking these two Y values and we're subtracting them to see how much rise they have. Hmm. So you'll see this sometimes called rise. Rise is up and down on the Y. Yeah. And then X, X is run. That's horizontal. How yeah. far, what's the difference in between these two points on the X axis, right? Mm, yeah. That's what this is. So that's rise over run, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you also see a, uh, uh, a chain. Uh, you'll see that little triangle symbol. That, that means mean? delta. Delta. It means a change. Oh. A change in between the values. Yeah. So a change in y divided by a change in the x. Okay. So the y value change and the x value change, which is what we're showing right here. Oh. So they're all the same thing. All of the same thing. Yeah. Exactly. Now, we go back. So what's a y2 value? Y2 value. Y2. Two, 285. 285. And what is our Y1? Y1 is 50, minus 15. Right. But look, we got a subtract sign. So we've got to do subtract minus 15. Okay. Uh -huh. And now we divide. What's our X2? Our X2, what that is 10. That's right. And what is our x1? Zero. That is correct. And we subtract that. What is this? Z. You haven't seen that one before. No, I haven't seen that one. All right, so we got 285 yeah. minus, uh, minus 15. Yeah. So now when you get two negative signs together, mm -hmm. you change it to addition. So oh. now we add them. So 285, right, yeah. plus 15. I know. Wait. Five, what is this? This is ten. ten. And what is this? Wait, I can figure this out. This is nine. Two eighty-five plus fifteen. Three hundred. That's right. That is three hundred. Now three hundred divided by ten. Three hundred divided by ten. Simple. Uh, I don't know. All right, look here. Let's do an easy one. See that zero? Yeah. Let's. Put a mark through it. Okay. See that zero? Yeah. That's just put a mark through it. Okay. Now what's 30 divided by 1? 30. There you go. That's the answer. So our slope is 30. Okay? Alright, so we'll write that up here. So our M 
m equals 30, right? Yeah. Now, let me write here, y equals mx plus b. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to solve for b. We already know it's minus 15. Yeah. Let's prove it mathematically. Okay. So now what is a y? We can take any one of these two points. Okay. We, which one looks the easiest? Uh, this one. Alright, let's use this one. So, y is what? Minus 15? Yeah. And what's our slope? Our slope... For m? What is it? 30. So I put 30 in. What's our x? Our x from here is yeah. 0. So I put in 0. And then plus b? We don't know. We don't know. So, minus 15. 30 times 0 is? 30 times 0 is 30. No. Oh, zero. That's right. Zero. So zero plus B, right? Yeah. So we have left over here, B equals what? B equals minus 15. Look at that. Minus 15. Look at that. Oh. Crosses right over. Okay. So, so our Y intercept, or let's say the offset, if we're inside you know, picoscope, that's going to be equal to minus 15. Yeah. And to do the last thing, to prove that that is correct, mm -hmm. we got the correct numbers, right? Yeah. So we're going to right, get this out. And now, let's go for the other point now, and we're going to prove it, right? Okay. So what do we have for y? Y so is... Y, y is um, 285. 285. And what is our slope for m? Slope is 30. 30. And x is what? x is 10. 10. Okay. And what is our b? Our b. A y-intercept. Offset. Minus 15. That's right. Minus 15. So we have 285. 30 times 10 is what? 30 times 10. 30, 60, 90. Um, All right, look. 12, what's three? What's three times one? Three times one, three. That's right. How many zeros do you have? Two. One, two, three hundred. Oh. Now minus fifteen. Two eighty-five. Three hundred minus fifteen. Three hundred minus fifteen is two eighty-five. Look at that. <gasps> two eighty-five. Whoa! Check, checks off again. Boom. All right. Wow. All right. We're almost getting close to wrapping it up now. So guys, you see how this is done? And yep. I, as I promised, I'm going to show you a, a much easier way. You don't have to do any yeah, of this. Yeah, any of it. You just have to type it in. Yeah, okay. So now let's do, uh, let's do one more little thing. What? Okay, one more little thing. What happens, okay, so we said that, uh, Mm, this one right here, we said that, uh, so this equation is going yeah. to be y equals, right, 30 is our slope. Yeah, m. Um, Let's just write it out first. X, um, All right. Okay. Uh, maybe, the, maybe the folks can't see it over there. Let me write it right here so you like can see. Like right here. Yeah. yeah. All right, so y equals mx plus b, right? Yeah. So y is going to be don't know, do we? Yeah, we don't know. But we do know that y is going to be represented as what? Now this is what's going to happen in picoscope. You know, it reads a value as voltage, and it's going to take that voltage and then it's going to convert it into a pressure. Yeah. And this is how it does it. So here's our, here's our engineering units, y, which we said was pressure. Okay. Yeah. Here's our x, we said that was going to be Volts. Yeah. Right? Volts. All right. And we said that this equation is going to be y. Now let me put it right here. Y equals 30, right? Yeah. X minus. Let me get me another. Let me get another color here. All right. Let's do this one. Y equals 30 as a slope. Yeah. X. Right. Yeah. And what's up? Plus b. Oh, minus 15. Minus 15. So inside picoscope, you could be typing in 30 for your gradient or your slope, 
And you're going to be typing in minus 15 yeah. for your uh, Y intercept or offset, as it's called in Picoscope. Yeah. Now, now we get a voltage. We hook this transducer up, right? And we get a voltage of one volt. Okay. Picoscope reads one volt. All right, so where does that one volt go in this equation? Uh, one volt goes right there. Right here, right? Yeah. Remember, volts are on X. Yeah. So we say 30 times 1. Then we're going to say minus 15, right? Mm -hmm. Now, so now we're going to say that Y equals 30 minus 15, right? And Y equals 15. And yeah. that is the pressure. 15 PSI G. Wow. Right? Now, let's say we're going to look at atmospheric pressure. Hmm. Let's say it's uh, zero. Zero PSIG, right? Okay. All right. So, so 0.5 volts is what it should be. So when the pressure transducer is putting out half a volt, it should say zero, right? So Y equals 30. There's a half a volt. Big scope measure. Yeah. Minus 15. Okay. So y equals 30 times 0.5 mm -hmm. is what? My y equals 35. Uh, 5? What's half of 30? Half of 30 is 15. That's right, 15. And then minus 15, and look at there, y equals 0. Oh! Look at that. Oh so, my god. So we know that half a volt is going to be 0 psig, right? Okay. Now, what did we say for 285 volts? What was that going to be? 285. Right? It was going to be what? How many volts? I think it was... 10. Oh, yeah. Right? 10. 10. All right, so, now, Y, if we don't, let's say we don't know. Okay. And we got 30, and then there's our 10 volts yeah. minus 15. Yeah. Y equals, what, 30 times 10 is 300 yeah. minus 15. Y equals what? Um, 285. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Isn't that what we figured out? Yeah, now? yeah. Right. And, you know what? With math being so fun, we could do it the other way. What if we know the pressure? We, we got the pressure. We know the pressure. Yeah. And then we want to know what is the voltage. Mm. Right? Yeah. Okay. Let's say, call out pressure. What pressure do you want to use? Uh, 75. 75. So now look, where is that going to go? Over here? Over there? Where did I put that at? 75. Or do I put it here? No. Is it Y? What is Y? Y is... What did we say that was? Y is... Y is... Y is... Pressure. Y axis? Yeah. So we're going to put that right here. Okay. 30. Well, what's our X? X is what? Volts. X. We don't know. We don't know. All right, so we'll put him right there. Okay. Minus 15. Yeah. Right? Now, we need to get this 30X all by itself. So we got to get rid of this 15, don't we? We're going to minus it. So we're going to do what to this side? We're going to bring it down. No way. How about if I add 15? Oh. Wouldn't that give it? Get rid of it? Yeah. It so you know, if I add zero. 15, that would be zero. Well, what have I got to do over here? Same thing. I got to add 15 over here. And what I get over here? 90. Ooh. So now what I have? I have 90 equals what? 30x, right? Yeah. That's what I got left. Okay. Now I need this x by itself. So how can I get rid of this 30? Remember the 30 is multiplied times the x. Yeah. So how can I get rid of 30? You could... Minus it. No, there ain't no addition. What's the opposite of multiplying? Divide it. Divide it. And what do I divide it by? Divide it by... 30. Oh, yeah. Look, 30, they cancel out. Leaving me with just x. But I have to do the same over here, right? Yeah. So now x is equal to... 30. No, 90 divided by... All right, look at that, two zeros. Two zeros. Both, both, count now, what's 9 divided by 3? 9 divided by 3. 9, 18, 27. No, 9 divided by 3. Oh, divided. 3. Yeah, 3. So look at here. 
when I have three volts on yeah. a sensor, yeah. it's going to be equal to what pressure? 75. There you go. Wow. Now you know everything that I know about this. Hmm. There wasn't much to it, was nope. it? So that means I don't know much. Right? <laughs> Alright guys, that's going to that's going to take care of the whiteboard. But now we're going to go and show you how to do this like that. And we're going to go to the computer and I'll show you how it's done. Yeah. But I, I wanted to go through this at least so you, you know, when you see it how it's done, say, you know, just typing in the numbers and it gets to you the answer. It's always good to know how they do this. So let's take a look at that now. Okay, we saw how we did this on the whiteboard manually. So let's go to a website where it can do it for us automatically. I'll leave a link to the location of this website in the description beneath this here video. Let's take a look at the 150 PSI G pressure transducer. This is one from 0 to 150 and it puts a voltage out from 1 to 5 volts. Let's look across the top. We'll think of this as our minimum value. So our X is going to be for the voltage. We said that would be 1 volt and then it's going to have a pressure of 0 PSI G. Maximum is going to be 5 volts. It's going to have a maximum pressure of 150. So this is our equation. And in Picascope, you would be typing in 37.5 as your, as your gradient or slope. And over here, for your offset or y-intercept, you'd be putting in minus 37.5. Now let's take a look at the 0 to 300 PSIA. This is the absolute pressure transducer and it's going to be putting out a voltage from 0 to 10 volts. So looking at this again, this is going to be our minimum value. So at 0 volts, we want to have a pressure of minus 15. Now again, this is going to be PSIG because we want to scale this sensor to read gauge pressure. Down here, we're going to be putting in 10 volts and it has a maximum pressure of 300 but since I want to measure gauge pressure I'm going to subtract off 15 pounds off of 300 and that would give me 285. So again here's our equation and we're going to be putting in 30 as our gradient and minus 15 as our offset inside picoscope. Now as a little bonus let's see uh, a lot of the sensors out there you see they have a voltage uh, from 0.5 to 4.5 so let's use that one. So let's say that at 0.5, and it's going to be reading the gauge pressure of 0, and then at 4.5 volts, and let's say we're going to be reading, let's say, 300. So there you go. There's your, there's your equation. Let's say it was 200. There it is. Let's say it was 100, you know, PSI. So there you go. You can see how easy it is to get these here values out. Now one other thing, you might I've been saying that this is the minimum value up here and this is the maximum value down here on the bottom. But it does not really matter. You can put your maximum up here and you can put your minimum down here. And just to show you that, I'm going to go ahead and show you and first take note of this right here. There's our equation. So I'm going to put up here 4.5 and that's going to be 100. And down here, I'm going to be putting in 0.5, and that's going to be 0. Oops. And I'm going to put in 0. As you can see, you get exactly the same answer. Okay, let's take a look inside a picoscope of how we can customize one of these here pressure transducers. And let's use the 0 to 300 PSIA absolute pressure transducer as an example. First thing we want to do is go to Tools, Custom Probes. Well, we want a new probe. And we want to go to Next. Well, right here, if we look in here, we do not see a standard unit for pressure. So we're going to create one. So I'm going to click right here. And you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it Pressure. Over here, this is a short name for the unit, so I'm going to say PSI. Now, as a reminder for me, although I'm using an absolute pressure gauge, it's going to be scaled to read gauge pressure. I'm just going to put a G there to, as a reminder for me. 
Then we're going to go next. Up here, we're going to be putting in 30. 30 is our gradient or slope. And over here, we're going to be putting in minus 15. You remember these values is what we had already calculated before. So now we're going to say next. And I'm going to create my own gauge, uh, ranges here. So we'll click next. We're going to make a new range. And I'm going to say minus 15. That's going to be the lowest pressure. And over here, it's going to read the top of 285. Then we'll say OK. We're going to create a new range. Again, it's going to be minus 15. And let's just say we'll make it 200. And we'll say OK. So you can see there's our two ranges created. Then we we'll go to next. Now, whenever you're capturing a signal, you do not want to set a uh, filter on. So we do not want this enabled. You only want to enable it after you've made your capture. So we're not going to check that off. Now we go to next. Here is what we're actually going to see inside a listing of our probes. So I'm going to say absolute pressure trans transducer. It's going to be measuring from minus 15 to 285. PSIG. Okay. And then down here, we just give it a little description. So, absolute pressure transducer minus 15, 285 PSIG, and it's going from 0 to 10 volt DC. And then we finish. And if you look right there, it was created for us. And then we say OK. Now we're going to go up here to the A channel and we're going to select it. We're going to slide down. And there he is. OK. Uh, let's change him to 285. OK. And let's start the scope. Now you can see that the scale is in PSIG. You can see that it goes to 285, what we told it. And if we come down here, you can see that this line right here is for zero PSIG. And anything below that line is going to be measuring in a vacuum. And there's our minus 15 PSIG. All right, so what we're going to do here is a little experiment. I have the absolute pressure transducer. It's a, uh, one that measures from zero to 300 PSIA. It puts out zero to 10 volts DC and it takes a supply of volts from 9 to 30 volts DC. All right, if you look over here, you can see that I have a nitrogen tank. I have the regulator set to be uh, uh, apply a pressure of 285 PSI to the pressure transducer. This is gauge pressure, and in reality, the pressure transducer is measuring absolute pressure. So we will add approximately 15 PSI to this and that will give us the 300 PSI. So at this pressure, we can see that we are actually measuring about 10 volts. Okay, as you can see, we have PicoScope running now. We have the pressure transducer hooked up to the scope. We still have the 285 PSI G of pressure, and you can see that right here. Now, if I was to go ahead and just say, bring this here cursor down, let's type in 285. And as you can see, it lines up dead right on it. Now I have released all of the pressure off of the pressure transducer. So we're now reading zero PSI. Again, this is gauge pressure. But in reality, it is actually measuring absolute pressure. In other words, it's measuring the actual atmospheric pressure. So if we look over here on our voltmeter, we can see that at zero PSI G, we are measuring 0.515 volts. And with all of the pressure let off of the transducer, we're back to zero PSIG, as you can see down here. Scope's still running. And if we were to just uh, bring our cursor down, type in zero, and as you can see, it falls right dead on it. All right, I have a hand vacuum pump connected to the transducer now. So now we're going to pull a vacuum on this and we're going to look and monitor our voltage. Now right now our voltage is measuring about 0.5 volts. So it's measuring atmospheric pressure. So now I'm going to pump it up. As you can see the voltage is going down. 
And I'm going to try to get as most of a, a vacuum on this I can with this here hand vacuum pump here. And right now I'm measuring 26, 27, looks like right at 28 inches of mercury. So we have like 0 0.045 volts. All right, let's see what this transducer looks like in a vacuum mode. Right now it's measuring atmospheric pressure. I'm going to get the hand vacuum pump and I'm going to pump it. As you can see it's going down and I'm just going to pump it until I can get it as low as I can with this here pump. And looking at it, it's uh, 26, 27, right at 28. Right at 28. So let's get a quick measurement here. It looks like 13.78 and if I take 13.78 times 2, that's because we have, uh, for every pound of pressure, it's about 2 inches of mercury. So we have 27.56 uh, inches of mercury. So came very close. It was almost right at 28 from what I saw on the gauge. So that looks pretty good. All right, Zach, that's the end of the video. Mm -hmm. Did you learn anything? Yep. What? You, you going to remember it? Yep. All right. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate all your help. And say goodbye to the people. Bye. All right. Y'all take care. We'll see you in the next video.